Hey guys, welcome to another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench brought to you by Highline Guitars. If you like building or repairing electric guitars, I encourage you to tap that subscribe button down below. And if you do, I'll take your luthier skills to a whole new level. In this episode, I'm going to be covering part 10 of the Highline Guitars Steampunk Guitar Build. And what I'll be talking about specifically is I'm going to demonstrate how I relic the hardware that I'll be installing on this guitar. Now I say relic because that's the term that most people use when describing what I'm about to be doing. And in truth, in my opinion, relicking is an effort to make a guitar look vintage, sort of like a way of fooling people into thinking it's an older instrument when in fact it's brand new. I'm not necessarily trying to relic the instrument to look like it's old and vintage. I'm merely trying to get the hardware to match the finish that I applied on the guitar in the last episode, part nine. Now, if you would like to go back and watch all the previous parts to this series, at the end of this video, I'm going to post a link to a playlist that I've created for this entire steampunk guitar build. So stay with me and let's have some fun. The first victim of my relicking effort were my humbucker covers. And what I did was I hit them with a torch to give it that heat staining effect, which is really colorful. However, this only works on chrome plated nickel. It doesn't work on chrome plated brass. And then of course I took it a step further by hitting it with some sandpaper to give it a kind of a scuffed string worn look. Next, I moved on to the bridge, and that requires complete disassembly in order to do the relicking technique that I'll be applying to this. All of the screws and springs have to be removed from the bridge and the saddles to prevent them from getting damaged in the relicking process. To relic these, the first thing I did was I sanded the chrome finish with either 150 or 220 grit sandpaper. And what this does is it removes the top layer of chrome finish while exposing a very thin copper layer that's underneath. That's part of the chrome plating process. You have to be careful how you sand it, however, because if you overdo it, you can remove not only the chrome finish, but that underlying copper finish as well. And I wanted that copper finish to appear uh, as so that it would match uh, some of the copper finish that I have on the body and the neck of the guitar. The process is kind of fiddly as you can see here. And I ended up uh, using my fingers uh, with the sandpaper as well as a sanding stick to get into some of the hard to reach areas on the saddles. And this is how each of the saddles looks. You can see that the chrome finish has been worn away pretty well, revealing that uh, copper finish along the edges. It's kind of cool looking. And then of course I applied the same approach to the bridge base plate using sandpaper and sanding in uh, different directions in order to remove that chrome finish and reveal the thin copper plating that's underneath. Next I applied the same technique to the tuners and as you'll see here it's kind of a tedious process and it is fairly time consuming because I did do it all by hand. You could also probably use a Dremel with a uh, scrubbing bit, you know a wire br uh, bristle bit or something similar but you got to be really careful with the Dremel because not only will you strip off the chrome finish but you could also remove some of that underlying copper and doing it by hand even though it takes more time does allow for more control and a more deliberate uh, result. Now the next step is optional and it doesn't always work but what I did was I poured some muriatic acid into a plastic container. 
Then I put all of the hardware that I had sanded into a separate plastic container and then set it into that bath of muriatic acid. Uh, next, I covered up the top and I just let it sit for about 30 minutes. This will darken some of the exposed metal and just kind of heighten that relic appearance. Now for some of the plastic parts like my humbucker rings, I decided to hit it with some steel wool to take off the glossy finish and leave sort of a, a, a nice flat matte sheen. And even though it looks better with the, the matte sheen, it still needed something else. So what I did was I took some water-based acrylic model paint, and this is a metallic silver paint, and I just dry brushed it onto the surface of the humbucker ring. And this is a pretty cool technique. It, it gives it that sort of scratched and worn look. And it's the sort of thing that's really controllable. If you don't like the way it looks, you can just wipe it off or sand it off and start over. And as you can see, it's gonna look pretty cool with those uh, tarnished, heat-stained humbucker covers installed. So this is how all the parts looked after I was finished with this faux relicking process. I think it's gonna look great on the guitar. Now back to the guitar itself. Because I want the neck to feel as smooth as possible without that sticky polyurethane feel, I sanded the surface finish with uh, 800 grit 3M216U sandpaper, which gives it a nice smooth feel without being too sticky. The last thing I wanted to do for this episode was to line the control cavity with copper shielding tape. And what this does is it creates uh, what's known as a Faraday cage, and that helps to block outside electronic interference to the components in your guitar. What it will also do is provide a common ground for all of my electronics. And I'll explain that more in a future episode when I start to install the components. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode. In the next episode, I'll be installing all of the components that I just relicked into this guitar. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>